Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Another exciting announcement on the Call of Dragons official channel pin up in the comment above. But it is about, again, Roots of War. So let's go into a deep dive and try and break down more of this video since I'm guessing you guys have checked it out. So we're going to do a big deep dive throughout the video and I hope you enjoy it. So that's going to be today's episode. I hope you enjoy Root of War new update. Let's see what gets shown and we're going to learn hopefully a bunch of information on how to play the brand new game mode coming Thursday which is on the 14th or 13th, should I say 13th, which is tomorrow. So this is a big, quick video, as you can see, that's come and been rushed out. So I hope you guys enjoy it all. So this is going to be the video on the Call of Dragons, obviously, official website. It's going to be showcasing the roots of war and a really cool thing we get to see two of the devs that we work with ourselves which is Asaya on the left and Mr. Leo kind of just say Mr. Husbando shall we say with that shirt I'm just saying but both looking very fly they do give you the whole rundown which is really cool so if you guys want to know and watch the video it does tell you and they'll explain things to you in the um video but this is where they're going to start breaking down a lot of information about roots of war so this is the first key thing for you guys in order to participate in roots of war you're going to need to be inside of one of the top 20 servers in the kingdom plus you need to have built at least 10 flags on the, the server and if you don't have those requirements you're not going to be able to actually participate so they're just the minimum requirements as you can see and this is just as is a campaign test versions of the new campaign which is honestly love the ui love how it looks so you can see the dragon trail there for the campaign which is where you guys pr push for all your prestige but the roots of war is now next to it which is really cool so you're going to be able to click on this to register again. Make sure you're in a top 20 alliance and you have 10 flags built and you're going to be good to go. And then when you click on this icon, this is going to show you the the page, right? So if we just go back and click on it really quickly, <clears throat> this is potentially the screen, right? This is, again, as you can see at the top right, stuff could change, you know, anything can change here. But it's showing you the rules and we don't know what a battle sync is is right now but that's a really cool thing that we can potentially see but you got rules and that's what they're going to go over right now and it's a really good part of this video so when you click and pause it for a second they explain everything that it is again but really simple so we need top 20 10 flags once your registration has opened your players in the roots of war can obviously be allocated in the current alliance right so if you leave this alliance during the pick phase or during the any preparation timing of this uh, roots of war and you join in another alliance what happens is you lose your place and you basically cannot join a new alliance's registration so you basically lose the opportunity to participate so it's a very key thing so if you're going to be participating in the Roots of War event for an alliance, make sure you join that alliance before this event starts and before the registration has concluded. Because once that has and the conclusion has been set and you can only see the teams that's going to be playing, <clears throat> you're not going to be able to join. Right, so again, this is what points two, three, and four all say. So you're gonna read through them, you can read through them, but point four, when registration ends, the Alliance team roster will be locked and it cannot be changed. So if you if it can't be changed and then you, for example, have left the Alliance and joined a new Alliance, well, you've now lost that potential chance of playing. So you can see players who join an Alliance after as well, the registration opens, they won't get any of the received rewards or any of the team rewards. So you have to make sure you're in the right place. Make sure you're in the, the right place. And if you are, you're going to get rewards. Nice and simple, right? These kind of rules, again, if you're thinking these are a bit over the top, 
These, I think, are pretty much the exact same rules in Rise of Kingdoms with Ark of Cyrus. You need to be in your alliance. You can't really swap between alliances once the um, registration phase is done. And once that's all concluded and you're in the fight, then it, it's basically set in stone then. So, if we go back, the really cool thing, it does scroll down really quickly. Your alliance leader can nominate up to 10 subs. This is, again, this could change, but you get 30 combatants, and we know this is solid because it is a 30 versus 30 alliance battleground game mode, but you potentially could have up to 10 substitutes. So 40 players potentially in the roster could be playing in the game, and I'm guessing the reason why they're doing this, again, as you can think of, maybe some members mess up or maybe some members don't turn up to fight so you need these 10 members of subs to jump in and fill it in the gap to make sure you always have a full squad ready to conquer and win the fight right so again eligible players must have joined the alliance before the start of and this is where it's going to disappear but it does say before the registration of that team roster so make sure you are in in the registration that is the most crucial part of this stage and the real cool part is as well <clears throat> where you can see on this screen now it has its own little hot event where you can see the rankings or potentially of the server on who's been winning who's been losing it also gives you a nice little guide which we will cover in the tom tomorrow's videos but as well the left side which you're going to go over in a moment in the video is the event calendar as well as the celestial battlegrounds so these are some new events as well as new features being entered into the roots of war um patch on patch 1.017 so in here now, we're going into basically some game footage and they're explaining how some of these buildings work. And the real cool thing is, as you can imagine, similar to Rise of Kingdoms is if you look at the top of the corner, where that map is, there's different buildings and each building has a specific buff which leo is going to go over very shortly but when you're in this terrain as you can see there is different levels of combat and you're going to be able to basically fight on that plane so if you're on for example in this little region here where the keep is the flag and that temple with a nice little open you know hole there Flying units are going to be able to maneuver over that hole and abuse their flying capabilities, but they won't be able to go from a, that area and fly up into that little yellow golden zone. They have to go through these hard downhill passes and it basically keeps the flying, hopefully, units in check. So it's a really good way of showcasing that. Obviously, when you spawn, you're going to be spawning on either the red side or the blue side. And your aim in this game mode is to capture as many of these buildings as you can, gain points from capturing these, and then gain the life stone. So on screen, which is paused, is the little life stone icon right here on top of a Embry's unit that you're going to see that fly across in a moment and you're trying to capture this life stone to get some big big points for your alliance as well as you can imagine you get individual rewards individual rewards are gained through either killing or through either doing resource pointing which is obviously farming on resource tiles or even garrisoning, pretend, you know, protecting these buildings, right? So there's loads of different ways you can get points in this game mode. But this is really fun, right? You can see them taking that little firestone there from the middle here, and then he's running across that bridge, and he's getting chased. This looks hilarious, and I hope I can be able to shoutcast this for some really good PvP footage and it'll be really fun to see how you guys play this game mode and all the different strategies right what comes out so you can see him and he zips across though and he runs and he escapes right and he's going to be running gets blocked but then he gets out so really really cool little bit of footage there on the roots of war so you do get to see a lot on it so right now what we're talking about is the bases in battle so these outposts here are going to be basically your beginning area so these are where you're going to be able to like 
expand and get extra resources for your alliance, right? So you can see these different pools here. And the cool thing is some of these buildings, which Leo is gonna go over, will give you basically extra resource healing or extra free healing, basically extra healing within the game mode. So there's very gonna be very high emphasis, as you can imagine, in the buildings that's gonna be coming up. But this feature here is honestly, give them a round of applause for doing this. This is amazing. So what you can do in the new patch is create five talent builds. And in these five talent builds, if you create them in five separate ways and obviously label them how you want, when you join a Roots of War battlefield, you're gonna be able to switch between these freely, but you have to make sure the talents are set, right? So this is the only thing. So you have to make sure you've got that talent build for, as you can example here, is more of like a magic, trying to hit multiple units with that lucky 8% extra hit you know on this magic tree here so you can try and use this tree and then there's different trees you can be running right so you can actually test really well here for pvp so aside does a really good job here explaining it all for you guys which is again you need to make sure they are configured for yourself and then you can then use them freely in this game mode so just make sure you get those talent pages set up ready for combat because i can't wait for it so again in this if we go back the way artifacts work is basically artifacts are going to be at a set level if i remember hearing this correctly so as you can see battle sync does not change the artifact star ratings or skill levels um it changes their level so basically if you've got a level one artifact that is potentially six stars you know level six or, or should i say five level five in its skill like my shadow blades is and you start a new season what this game mode does is it brings that artifact all the way to max level so it'd be level six there so everyone's artifacts are always going to be max level so you have a level 60 artifact in this mode but your star rating and skill levels don't change so depending on what you've invested in that's where you're going to get the power right and where you've specialized as a player and where you've been picking as your artifacts it's going to give you potentially more of a personality and a bit more of a character in the game right you've got a bit more of a role instead of just having the exact same thing that everyone else has right because you might have been upgraded more mage artifacts because you're a mage player maybe you're an arch player you've done the archer ones there's cavalry players you know all these different players now get to show off all of their investments for free because these artifacts are going to be maxed up so really really cool feature in this game the buffs in this is really good as well so in here we get actually a load of little you know cool little bits so the buff effects this is basically in the game when you're fighting you're gonna have access to all of these buffs that are in there's certain buffs you cannot get as you're gonna see later down on the list but these are the current buffs that you can get so there's the buff types which is your technology on a membership which is vip and your faction right so these are basically your personal traits these are what you own as a castle right so your tech your vip and your faction you keep all of this your alliance title so if you're an officer and you have like the beast master title for example or if you have the the you know war master and you have the extra attack you're gonna keep those buffs as well if you have a city film, so the building, as you can see, the buffs, you're going to have as well. So any buildings that you've increased, so this is levels 25, when you get that extra 0.5% HP bonus on your units, you're also going to maintain that buff. You also maintain any item buffs, and again, the city theme skins, which is good because this, as you know, we already have one in the game, um, but we're going to be obviously having more and more different city themes in the game. So by having this, you can see it, there is a use for them outside of just your PvP in open field. But the Alliance technology and the runes for the uh, 
account. So a rune is obviously something you've picked up from the Hydra or the Behemoth. If you go to any of those guys and you kill one of those little groundlings, they drop a rune stone. If you have like a Legion attack buff, that is inactive, that does not work. As well as any of your Alliance tech, that will not work as well because this is gonna be in a different zone. Um, again here, you've got village, um, any village buffs. So if you've got any extra, you know, elixir healing, for example, that does not count as well as the behemoths, right? So any behemoth levels you have, they do not count towards this game mode. So nice, good way of showing the buff effects. This is why I really do like this Roots of War Battleground video that they've been able to do. Because again, here, when we go across, the healing is different, right? So the way you can heal now is in the game mode, as you see, the initial elixir healing is set to zero, and this is for all the seasons. The way this is gonna be increased, Leo is gonna explain, and I hinted it earlier, right? There's different building that's gonna allow you to do that. However, there's unlimited resource healing, which is insane. Unlimited resource healing is if you're a whale and you really wanna to go to town and have fun, and figure out what's your best match and not worry because you have all the resources, this is your territory, right? For everyone else, it's a little bit harder, right? Because if you know you're in at that, maybe if you're at the end of the season, you know, and you've got that 15, 20 day peace zone where nothing really happens, well, you've got 15 to 20 days of pure farming and during this, you're gonna use some of it for this event. And it's gonna obviously give you some really good rewards for doing that, right? So this is the way the healing system currently works. Your legion capacity as well is increased. So you can see in season one, you have an extra 41,500 troops. Um, your policies will not be applied during these fights. So any sort of legion capacity bonuses through the policies and any buffs won't be there, but you're gaining it hardcore you know, here, right? So season one plus is when you get that initial increase. So from there, you're gonna have that 87,500 cap, like everyone else does, like myself, as you see in the Stars Reignited campaign. So this is the cool thing now. Leo goes over some of the elements in the fight, right? So at the moment, you can see you're gonna get different scores per minute, and this is gonna be obviously determined by different buildings you capture, and you wanna get individual scores. So obviously we know individual score, you're gonna be able to get this from either protecting buildings, fighting, resourcing on these tiles, as you can see, a bunch of different ways like you would do in Ark of Osiris. And then Asaya then goes on to explain about how the map works. So the livestone, when we go into this little nice screenshot here of the map, in Route to War, there's three livestone pedals. So you can see you can fight on three different fronts. You can fight on the left, right, middle. So this is an emphasis almost on, I wouldn't say like a League of Legends map, but it is, right? Almost, you've got three lanes to fight in. And the whole premise is to fight in these three separate lanes. And then, you know, through strategy, you might sacrifice one lane. So all of your troops is on a 50-50 split on the left and the middle, right? You can do stuff like that where you as an alliance have to now think of the strategy. What's worth it? What's not worth it? Can you get the bonuses? Can you not? And so forth. So a really, really cool dynamic in the game mode, because now as you see, there's certain passes there and gates that you might have to fight through to own. There's also these, obviously, outposts that allow you to hopefully teleport your castles from the main zone into a more closer region, I believe. But then you've got these main castles, right? So you've got these main castles here. These are gonna give you different buffs. So each of these buildings are very critical when it comes to combat, right? So we're gonna see that now. You're gonna see that Mr. Colin here showcasing it. He's taking the lifestone. He's running for his life here. And a really good thing, again, if you're not noticed there, if we just pause it at the right timing like that, the UI upgrade, right? So this is a really good change that we've all been asking for. When is a critical hit a critical hit? And I believe that's what we're seeing there. That, that sign, I believe, is 278 critical hit, 
Meaning, whatever before it were was a normal hit. Obviously, you got the purple damage. That is your artifact or skill damage that gets flung out. But again, you see again, critical hit, 280. And then you got 145 normal skill damage, right? So really, really interesting to see on how this is going to play out on the game mode when you get to see it. Hopefully, it's not too crazy on screen. But this is where we're going to the buildings, and I love the buildings. The buildings is probably where a lot of the players from Rise of Kingdoms is honestly going to feel a lot more at home. Because these buildings are going to basically be your rallying and garrison combat. When you guys love rallying and garrisoning flags in Rise of Kingdoms, well, this is it. This is your answer right here. You're going to be able to do it hopefully on a weekly basis or every two weeks potentially when this game mode eventually comes out right and this is gonna be insane because if you're able to hold these zones you know these big massive buildings are high ticket buildings they give you a ton of points per hour it's going to allow you as an alliance to basically win if you occupy these as well as capturing different sorts of the you know life stones across the map so as you can see the tree is the courage here increase the attack and defense of all your troops and if we go across when we break it down the outposts as well these are there allows you to um travel basically closer into the combat the healing ones again allow you to get more healing done which is really really cool so again your resource one now this is all about resourcing you can gather and once you gather in these resource tiles, you're going to gain extra points per minute because you've been gathering. And you can see here, really cool, right? The rules, right? You can see how much certain things in the game is worth, right? A level one node, 33 points. A level three node is 66. It's double the points, right? Um, which is really sick. There's other rules when you can see 300. Don't know what that means right now, but you can understand what's going on, right? So you can see gaining these points through the guard tower, 80 score um, every or 80 score for the first occupation, and then you're gaining 30 score every minute you occupy that guard tower. The tree, which is nuts, and these are where we were talking about the big ticket items. The tree for the first occupation gives you 400 score there and 80 score per minute. So very, very big ticket item on what you're going to be needing to focus on, right, in this game mode. So just remember when you are doing this, you need to try and share. And obviously when you're defending these types of garrison buildings on screen, you're going to need to refresh your troops. You're going to need to keep making that rally leader obviously better right because if he's defending this tree of healing right now with his garrison and your troops are basically at red you need to refresh otherwise if you get hit by a relic your troops are going to die you're going to lose this tree of healing and you can see now elixir production speed 20 percent <laughs> This is what we've been waiting on, right? So getting control of these trees of healing is so important because if you control two of them, you're gaining 40% extra free healing in the game. So you can now overpower your opponents with the free healing and the resource healing, especially for other players that are lower power, right? So if you've got the free to play players that are struggling with the resource healing, this is the way they are able to also help in the battlefield. So it is a very important aspect in this game, right? So you've got to remember, as you can see, you've got your 700k there capacity for that building and you're going to need to keep refreshing and make ensure you are at full cap at all times because if that lose if you lose that it's going to be a detriment right you're going to have to spend forces to try and recapture it and then if they lose then you've wasted more resources and you're going to fall even further behind so it is a hopefully a big emphasis in this video why you're going to be needing to capture it right and we're only halfway through this video this is why it's a jam-packed monster of a video and this is why i love um the way they've done this roots of war reveal so far the rewards as you can see you got a score of getting over ten thousand, i believe alliance score and by getting over ten thousand alliance score you're gonna gain 10 sculptures for generational one heroes this is for our 
whatever generation you're in. So again, if you're in season one plus, you should get generational two tokens, right? So just remember, these are gonna scale when you're in different ones. You also gain a massive 10K troop cap, meaning you can now train 10,000 units instantly on top of the 2,000 you've been training already. And then you get a bunch of gems, speed ups and resources, which is really nice. But this is where it's really cool, right? For your individual personal efforts. So if you've been farming really hard, if you've been, you know, garrisoning really hard, you know, you've been refreshing your T4 troops and protecting those buildings the best you can, and then doing some open field fighting, 10K score is gonna grant you five extra sculptures for your account there. And then on top of that, if we go back, let's just try and get this all paused so we can get it. So the personal scores there, Free for only between three and six k, six k to ten k, you get even four, and then as long as you got ten k plus one extra point over ten k, you get in five heads. So this event gives you fifteen tokens to upgrade. So this is very good, right? You're always gonna gain something for participating in this if you're trying your hardest as an alliance to get the score for you. And you're gonna be able to upgrade your heroes. And this is why a lot of people have been asking for this event, right? Because it's really good for PvP. It allows you to fight for, till your heart's content. And then on top of it, it allows you to invest and upgrade heroes more easily. So really, really good um, event so far as you can see and the rewards is basically the exact same so far as you can see from the rise of kingdoms all team members as you can see in the losing alliance still received even if you don't participate you know if you're not even a member in the alliance and you're not doing anything you know you're not in the main team you still get rewards that's the cool thing even though if it's nothing you know two silver keys isn't nothing maybe one gold key to and two gold keys would be better because obviously gold keys are used more often and more what you want but you know it's really nice to see you're able to gain some extra rewards and as you can see it went up and there's more rewards but we couldn't see that so hopefully when the game mode comes out we're going to be able to cover that more so hopefully you've enjoyed today's video that is all of the footage so far on the roots of war right now this will go into the celestial battlegrounds and then it's going to go into the alliance improvements the season of improvements as well as the new legendary artifacts right so if you guys want to check out the rest of the video i'll leave it up to you because i want this to be specifically for that roots of war combat but as we are ending out of the video smash a like comment and subscribe to the con um, and to the channel i am an official content creator for the game and they are looking for content creators so this is the content creator prom program for you guys if you're looking to join you can go to the discord find it up or even join the www.creatorzone.com website that's on the screen right now sign up and see if you're able to join the team i do apologize aside for that face um that i paused on but it's gonna allow you guys to hopefully join the content creator team like myself and boss nasty chisgo echo shincho everyone you can imagine that is part of the Call of Dragons team. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've learned something today and maybe enticed you in being a content creator as well. You gain a load of benefits on screen here that Leo is going over right now. So I'll just leave them paused up so you can have a quick read for the ending. But if you have enjoyed it, remember to smash like, comment and subscribe. But until the next video, stay safe, stay sneaky. Peace out everyone.